Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy. Today, I'm so super excited. I'll be doing a collaboration with the sweet, beautiful, and sparkling Olivia from Olivia's Romantic Home. And what we did was sent each other a box of perky prizes where we bought things from Dollar Tree. And in her case, she got me a couple of things from Dollar General that we're gonna turn into some cutie patootie home decor items. If this is your first time stopping by or if you're coming over from Olivia's channel, welcome and I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. After you're done here, don't forget to stop by Olivia's channel and I'll have her video linked in the description box below. Make sure you tell her I said hi and give her big hugs for me. And now, without further ado, let's get started. So this is the box that Olivia sent, and she is so my girl. You can see the first message right away. She's a lover of Jesus, and just even her box was so perky and sweet. So Olivia is so well known for all of her beautiful floral arrangements, and so of course she sent me some of the pretty tulips and hydrangeas. She also sent me some Mackenzie Child's napkins, a pack of round chalkboard tags from the Dollar Tree and you guys know I love using tags. I'm not going to be using these ribbons but I just wanted to show you I'll use them in the future but my Dollar Tree has never had these ribbons before. And then a chunky wood cross which I had never seen at my Dollar Tree. Some wood beads that are the colored ones. I didn't have any of these either so I'm excited to use these. And then this cute wooden watermelon that has a metal tag that says sweet. And this is actually from Dollar General. So again, it was only a dollar. And then this beautiful Christmas ornament. And this is from Hobby Lobby. When I see this, this totally reminds me of Olivia. So I'm going to be using this even though it's not Christmas time yet. But maybe that'll get everybody in the mood and ready for Christmas time, which is just around the corner. <laughs> And then this black mirror and it's the real pretty ornate looking frame and then these gold rub on letters and then this is my favorite i was so inspired by this this is from dollar general and it was only a dollar it's a pot holder that has these cute little gardening boots with the flowers inside of them so i'm going to be doing a diy with this she had this box completely full to the rim. She has such a generous and giving heart. And the box itself was so cutie patootie. It had this on the top with the label. And then she had sweet little napkins with these bunnies and doilies. And it was even in a Pioneer Woman bowl box. <laughs> so she gave me so many sweet and adorable things. And I am just so excited to get to use these. Now on the off chance that you've never heard of her, this is sweet and beautiful Olivia. She has the sweetest spirit and heart. You are just going to love her if you don't know her. She makes amazing projects and she's so talented. She puts some playlists together and some compilations that are so good for binge watching. So for our first project, I'm going to be using the mirror, the ornament, the round tags, and the rub-on letters. And so I was at first going to paint this white, but I happen to have <laughs> another white mirror. So I'm just going to take that step out of there. I don't think that's cheating, but <laughs> it just made it a lot easier because this is very ornate and beautiful. So I took the ornament and I want to lift it up a little bit. So I'm going to take two Jenga blocks and glue those to the mirror. And then I'm going to glue the ornament on top of that. So it kind of sticks up and has some dimension. Now because this is an ornament, it has the two holes at the top, so in order to cover those, I wanted to use some of this sheer ribbon from Dollar Tree and a couple of scrap pieces of florals from the Dollar Tree as well. I ended up changing this in the end, but it was still cute, so I wanted to show you. So I just made a sweet little bow and I tied it with another piece of the ribbon because you can't use a chenille stem on it, otherwise it will probably show. So I took my little florals, and these are those kind of rubbery plastic ones, and I wanted to put them together, so I just used one of the sticks from one of them and then put them together onto one stem. So I just took my ornament and hot glued that to the Jenga pieces, and then I'm going to take my florals and hot glue that above the ornament. 
And before I did that, you guys have been telling me I need to get my finger protectors back on. So I made sure that I had them on this time. And then I just put some hot glue down, put my florals on top of that. And then I'm gonna place my bow right on top of the florals. So I decided to add a little bling on my bow and this was a brooch from Totally Dazzled that Olivia had sent. She sent me a whole package of these beautiful rose gold brooches. And so now I'm gonna put the word dream onto my tag. And so I used my rub on letters and just placed them up and down and made it look a little whimsical. I had to come up with a word that had to do with the Christmas scene that I was placing it on. And there's only one of each letter on this sheet. So I just cut them apart and they kind of stuck together, but I made it work and it looked really cute when it was done, especially because it's gold and it kind of matched that glittery outline of the ornament. So then I just took my hot glue and I placed it on top of my little tag and then stuck it to the bottom of my ornament that was sticking up. So as cute as this was, I decided that the purple of the flowers and the bling were just kind of taking away from the beautiful scene that was on the ornament. So I decided to take it off and add some more of that really pretty sheer ribbon from Dollar Tree and just added a couple more loops to the top of the bow that was already on there. And that covered up the little holes anyway. So it, this way, I think it just stood out more. And so you notice the scene instead of the embellishments. And here's how it turned out. And I think it is so precious and adorable. I was gonna play some Christmas music for you guys, but <laughs> I know we're only in July and so you don't even really want to think about Christmas at this point but this is just such a precious picture and I love it I love the softness and the colors and that soft soft pink and so if you're not throwing things at your TV <laughs> I really love this and I hope you like it too For our next DIY, we're gonna be using this watermelon plaque. And I found these magnolias at Walmart and they were $4 each, but they are just beautiful and they look so realistic as well as the leaves, but I love the colors of the insides of the flowers. And then I'm gonna be using some moss from the Dollar Tree, some floral foam, some Waverly chalk paint in white, some painter's tape, and then my hot glue gun and scissors. And so I had this bucket, I don't even remember where I got it, but I used it for a friend's baby shower. But you could use any bucket that you have, and I love this one because it has a handle with the wood part on top. So all I did was take some painter's tape and masked off the top because I didn't want the copper part showing. And so I'm gonna paint the top white, and I'm also gonna paint the inside rim white as well, so that if you do see inside of it, you'll just see the white and none of that copper. I also really liked the look of the galvanized portion of this bucket because it wasn't so shiny and it looked kind of old. So I just left that the way it was and it'll match our little tag from the watermelon. So I just pulled off the handle and painted the top with two coats of my Waverly chalk paint in white.
So then I wanted to make a hole in the front of the bucket, but over to the side so that my cuteness would show from that watermelon. So I just took my big nail and placed a piece of board under it and then used a hammer to make a hole and then fed some jute twine through that and tied it to the top. And then to keep it straight and facing forward, I hot glued my sweet sign onto the watermelon, but more so that it was able to be read easier and not just hanging flat down and covering the watermelon. And then I tacked the watermelon itself to the bucket the way that I wanted it to hang. And then I'm gonna take my floral foam and stick it inside and then put my magnolias into that. And I only had two, you could put three, things usually look better in threes, but these were so big that it was fine with just the two. And then just to cover everything up, I put some of that moss around and that will cover up my floral foam. And then I'm gonna replace my handle onto the bucket and then it will be done. And here it is all finished and I think this turned out so sweet, no pun intended, <laughs> but it's just so light and airy and farmhouse and it could be considered a summertime piece of decor, but I just love how this is just so happy and cute and I hope you guys like it. For our next project, I'm gonna be using that Chunky Wood Cross from Olivia, an eight by 10 acrylic photo frame, this calendar from Dollar Tree that has the beautiful paintings by Tara Moss. I used this in another DIY and everyone had been asking where I got it and it was Dollar Tree. And then my Waverly white chalk paint and ballet slipper and then my wax in antique, as well as some Liquitex acrylic paint from Michaels and then my hot glue gun and scissors. And so this is another super quick and easy DIY. And I just picked out a picture that I wanted to use. And so I just cut it out and then I'm gonna measure the size of the frame. And I did it on the back so that I could see where my circle was gonna be so that it would be in the middle. And then I just traced it out. But on the back are the numbers from the calendar and you can see those through the white of the outside portion. And so to cover that up, I used a piece of black cardstock to back it. If you use white cardstock, you can still see the numbers and the squares, but black, I guess because it's printed in black, it doesn't show if that's on the back side. So once I got that in there, there's a protective coating that just comes right off and that's just gonna keep it from getting scratched up. So I pulled that off and then I'm gonna take my cross and I'm gonna stain that with the Waverly Wax in Antique. And so I just cut off my jute twine. Originally, I was gonna cover up the hole with my Dollar Tree spackle and then paint over it, but then I had another idea and I was gonna feed some jute twine and tie a bow at the top. But then I changed my mind and I pulled the spackle out by using a skewer and poking it out. So then I'm gonna try and find the right shade that's gonna match with this painting. And so I just added some of the magenta, some wax, some ballet slipper, and then finally some black, and just tried to get it to the right shade. And then I'm gonna take my Waverly Wax and stain my cross, and 
it's always easiest if you paint the outside edges first because then that way you can hold on to the front and back with your fingers. So I just painted it on there with the paintbrush and then wiped it off with a paper towel and I did that all the way around and then on the top. Now I should have done the back because part of the back is going to show so do as I say and not as I do and make sure you paint at least half of the back but you might as well paint the whole back while you're at it. And you'll see at the top of my cross where I had wiped off the spackle, it takes the wax a little bit differently. And so I had to put on a second coat so that it matched a little bit better. And so after I got it all stained and waited for it to dry, I'm going to take my colored paint and start painting some baby roses on the middle part. So I had done another DIY where I painted a Bible cover. So if you want to see a more detailed and larger version of painting these messy roses, you can watch that video and I'll have it linked in the description box below. But for this, I'm just going to let you watch. And to my youngest, sweetest viewer, Davey, this is for you, Bubby. So there was an area on the painting that had some black little berries and I wanted to put those onto my cross. So I just used my Faber-Castell pen and those are the pens that have the different tips on them. So I just kind of went in and started drawing them out. When I got to the bottom portion, I was upside down and so it kind of got out of control and I didn't like the way that it was looking. So something that you should always remember is that there's really nothing that you can't fix. So I just went back in and painted a rose over that and kind of started from scratch. And you just kind of have a whole different level of confidence when you know that you can erase your mistakes. Hmm. I'll let you guys fill in the Bible study on that one. <laughs> So now I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper and sand down all of the edges and I really love sanding wax when it's on top of nude wood because it just gives it such a nice distressed look and makes it look all cute and rustic. So with my original idea I had planned to make a sweet little bow and put it at the top of my cross but for some reason I don't know Jesus and bows just don't go together. So instead, I decided to wrap my twine around the top and it looked kind of like a crown. And so Jesus and a crown, now that does go together. So I just tied a knot in the back and then cut off my excess twine. And then I'm going to take my hot glue and glue half of it onto the frame and then let half of it hang off because you guys know I like to go outside of the borders there. So after I got that on there, it was all done. And here's how it turned out. I think this is so super sweet and I know I'm not the best painter but I think it really does look cute and these roses because they're messy by nature that's just a good excuse where it makes you look like you're a really good painter but <laughs> anyway I love how this turned out I think it's so sweet and ended up costing three dollars for a super cute piece that you can put on a shelf or on a tabletop but I love the message and I love Tara Moss's work and 
even though I'm down two months out of my calendar, <laughs> I think it was worth it. For our next project, I'm going to be using the florals and the beads that Olivia sent me. And then a stick, you can get this from your tree. This is from an arrangement from my dad's funeral, so it has some special meaning to me. And so all I did for this one is take some jute twine and I cut down the stems of those florals. And I'm going to wrap it around a few times and then tie a knot on it. What I want to do is make a wall hanging and I'm going to kind of use that style where the flowers are drying upside down. And so I just got all my flowers ready and then I'm going to take my beads outside and spray paint those. So to do that, I'm going to put them all on a skewer and I want to make sure that they don't roll around so that when I paint them, they're staying in place. And I'm just going to use my Krylon spray paint in flat white. And this was a little tricky because I had seen other DIYers paint these beads and it doesn't really take the paint very well, but that was okay because I wanted some of those colors to kind of come through and just have it look a little bit distressed with the white on top of it. So kind of like a frosty cover. What I didn't expect was that when I spray painted them, there were kind of little bubbles all over it, so I thought that was cute too, and it gave it some textury, touchy feel good. So then I laid out all my flowers and kind of figured out where I wanted everything to be placed. And I only had three of the purple hydrangeas, so I wanted to make sure those were separated and looked kind of balanced. And so then I also put my beads out because I didn't know really how many I was going to have for each area. And I just kind of grabbed a bunch and then got tired of putting them on skewers so that's when I stopped. So once I had the basic layout then I'm going to take my jute twine and I doubled it over so I'm going to have five different rows and so the top is going to have a loop so it's just one piece of jute folded in half. So to get the twine onto the twig I took my loop and put it over the front and then I pulled the strings through that so that it would stay on the stick. And then I took a needle and threaded it through both of those strands of twine and then fed my beads on and my flowers on. And the way I have it wrapped separately, I'm able to tie the flowers onto the twine and be able to move it up and down so that I can get the placement and spacing the way I want it. Once I got done, I realized I needed some more greenery. So I took some eucalyptus leaves from Walmart that I get for, I think they're $2 a bundle. And so I just did the same thing that I did with the flowers to the eucalyptus and then added those in for some additional greenery. And then once I had everything attached and where I wanted it, I just tied knots at the bottom in random places just for some additional cuteness.
So now to make the hanger, I used a piece of jute twine. It's a little bit thicker. It's the kind that came off of the top of those galvanized buckets from the Dollar Tree. And so I saved this, and this is the perfect project to use it on. And so I just made loops at each end of that twine and then attached it to both sides of my twig and then cut off the excess. And here's how it turned out. And I think it is so stinking sweet. And I love it because my favorite flower is the hydrangea and my favorite color is purple. And Olivia is known for her pink tulips that she uses in a lot of her DIYs. So this is just a sweet friendship piece that has both me and Olivia incorporated into one cutie patootie piece. A few years back, we actually did this on a larger scale for my younger daughter's bedroom. And so we had the whole entire wall filled with just draping flowers all the way across. And so it was like 10 feet of beautiful flowers just flowing down. So just wanted to give you an idea for your home decor. going to be using these Mackenzie Childs napkins and I wasn't familiar with Mackenzie Childs but I also thought Ray Dunn was a guy so it just goes to show you but here's some of the work that they do I, I don't know if this is a girl or a guy either but it's got the checker pattern and it's real whimsical and cute so I thought I would use my tea kettle that I don't use anymore because I got an electric one and I'm going to also be using some painters tape and then some paint in black, white, and gold, and then my painter's pens in black, white, and gold. And I get a lot of questions about my felt pen, and this is what they look like, and they come in a set like this with different tips from Michaels. And then I'm gonna be using Mod Podge, and all I'm gonna do is paint my kettle white using my Waverly White Chalk Paint, and then I'm gonna make some lines to make that checkerboard pattern. So I didn't need a completely solid coverage on this because if you notice in the pictures that I was showing, the checkerboard pattern has some depth to it and has some lines in it. So I was okay with not having a complete coverage on this. And most of the items in the McKenzie, Ch I keep wanting to say McKenzie Phillips, but okay, that dates me, I know. But most of the items have gold accents and so since this is like a stainless steel i'm going to end up covering all of those parts with a gold paint so what i did was just made lines at the very top and i just went one across from the other and kind of made an x so i went across from each other and then again across from each other and then went in between those two lines and then ultimately in between those two lines if that makes sense and then at the bottom because it's larger at the bottom than it is at the top kind of like me so i just had larger squares at the bottom and smaller squares at the top so once I got my hash marks in place, I'm gonna take some painter's tape and just make myself a guide so that I can draw in those lines using my felt pen. And it's not really pushed down, I'm not masking it, I'm just using it as a guide so that I get some semi-straight lines. But on the McKenzie Childs products, they're not all perfect, so that was a good thing since I'm not perfect. And so I do this all the way around, and then I'm gonna do the opposite way, going around the circumference of the kettle, and I'll use my painter's tape to give me a guide as well.
So for the lid, I just did that one by hand since it was so small. But one thing that I learned is that in order for it to come out right so that you have a checkerboard pattern, you apparently need to have an even number of squares. So unfortunately I didn't and I had to add one extra line in there so that I would have the checkerboard pattern and it would match up. So then I took my napkin and I'm gonna cut apart some of the pretty flowers and then I painstakingly cut around the edges of those flowers so that I can then Mod Podge that onto my kettle. So I did one large one and then a semi smaller one and then a teeny tiny one for the lid. And then 18 hours later, I was ready to put it on my kettle. So these napkins are about three ply and so after I got it all cut out I pulled off the backing and then just left it with the single top ply part. And then I went in with the Mod Podge and put a real thin layer and then put my napkin piece on top of that. And then I'm going to go over it all pretty lightly so that I don't rip anything and then it'll stay in place. So once all my flowers were down and my Mod Podge was dry, I went back in with my Sharpie paint pen and filled in the black squares of my checkerboard pattern. I really thought this was going to be a lot harder than it was, but it turned out to be a lot easier than I thought. Even though my tip was a little bit larger and I thought I would need something smaller to get in those nooks and crannies, it really worked out pretty well and I was actually bummed when I got to the last one and was done because it was so calming and therapeutic.
So then I took my gold Sharpie paint pen and went along all of the areas that had the stainless steel on it. And in the end, I go back in and use my gold paint with a paint brush to cover up the larger parts because the pen left a lot of lines. I also noticed when I was looking on Pinterest and online at the Mackenzie Child's products that a lot of their kettles would have crystal knobs. So I have a collection of different things that I either haven't used or just spare parts that I have in a box. And so I decided to change that knob out for a little crystal one. It's actually plastic, but you can't really tell. So now to give my checkerboard that quilted poofy look that the McKinsey Child's pattern has, I went in with a super, super dry brush and rubbed on some white chalk paint on the black squares and black chalk paint on the white squares. And here it is all finished and I just think this is so gorgeous. The only time I've ever seen McKinsey Childs is on Olivia's channel and she's got a whole bunch of it and I know why she's crushing on this because I think it is just so pretty. It's also very expensive so my $7 kettle will probably be the only piece I ever have in the McKinsey Childs style. But I really do love it and if you don't want to pay those high prices and you like this style, you can make it for the cost of a napkin. So now I'm going to be using this pot holder that's so cutie patootie. I was so inspired. I went to the Goodwill and found these gardening boots. And then I'm going to use this kitchen towel from Dollar Tree and some florals from Dollar Tree in all kinds of pretty colors. And then some random scrap greenery that I already had. And then some Delta Ceram Coat in red. And then two round floral foam pieces and then my hot glue gun, scissors, and some wire cutters. So the first thing I did was painted my boots, but I masked off the soles. This step should not be done because I ended up liking it with the whole entire boot being painted red instead of leaving the black sole. And once I got it done, it just looked like a really cute pair of boots. So I didn't want that. I wanted them to look like gardening boots. So the acrylic paint that I used covered this so well. So FYI, when painting rubber, it's super easy. It did take two coats, but that's because it's red and it was on a dark color. But once it was done, it looked like the rubber was actually red. So once I got those completely painted, I used the tissue paper that came in Sweet Olivia's shipment and I stuffed it into the boots so that it wouldn't be so narrow and it would look like they were full. And then I'm going to make my cuffs that were inspired by the picture on the pot holder. And I just folded over the ends after cutting the towel in half long ways. 
and then I'm gonna glue that to the top of each of those boots. And then I'm gonna start arranging my flowers and just pop those into the floral foam. So now to complete this sweet little gardening duo, I'm going to use this watering can that I got from the Goodwill for $6.99 and it's really good quality but I don't know why they wrote the price on top with a sharpie. So I'm just going to use my Goo Gone and wipe that off and get it all cleaned up and then I'm going to use my white chalk paint and paint the entire thing and then I'm going to use a makeup sponge from Dollar Tree and some red acrylic paint and I'm going to make a little checkerboard around the bottom and the top and then I'm going to give it that enamelware look by going along those raised edges on the handle and on the other handle. <laughs> so I want to put the pattern of the pretty pot holder on the front of this can and I'm going to use my Mod Podge to do that but I'm first going to mark where it's gonna lay so that I can do my checkerboard pattern before and after the actual piece goes down. And then after I cut it out, I'm gonna fray the edges and then I'll put the Mod Podge on.
And here they are together in all their glory. I absolutely love this. This might be one of my favorites. I don't usually do a lot of red other than Christmas and maybe Valentine's Day, but I love the assortment of beautiful colors and those blue roses are to die for. I just love it and I hope you guys like it. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. Don't forget to go to Olivia's channel and I'll have it linked in the description box below so that we can see what she made with the things that I sent her. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram and I hope everybody has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye.